In this video, we are going to get started with Python programming and Python code is shorter than the code which is written in any other programming languages because even for printing just a simple statement, we use have to use the header files in C, C++ and in other programming languages also, the syntax is much larger. It means that there is a main function and then we have to write it in the statements of print and all that thing. But in Python, it is very simple. For example, if you want to print hello world, then what we have to do is you have to just write print and in quotes you have to mention hello world. That's it. You have to write this simple line of code to print. There is no semicolon at the end of it and there is no printf or c in c out. It is just simple. As we write in English print, we have to write like that only. It is much easier. And you can see that Python code is much shorter than C. This is just for print also, but other codes are also very short in Python. And it's like English syntax. It makes Python more easy to learn by the programmers and other students also that it is much easier to learn. Whereas in C, what we have to do, we have to first initialize the header file, then in main function, we have to write printf, then the statement, then any return if there, that is return zero, and then we have to close, but you have to not do such things in Python. So that's why it's just much easier to learn. Now next, where we are going to execute our Python code, we are going to execute that in Google Colab. So for that, you have to not install any software or the software installation process is not there. So simply what we have to do is, you have to write here, you can see here, Google Colab. And this is the very first link, you know, collab.research.google.com. You have to click here. And next, if you have signed in already, then it, this particular screen will open or else you have to sign with any of your Google account and then you have to create a new notebook. So here we are going to write all our Python code and this is basically a very good feature, a cloud that we are using for running our Python code rather than reducing the process of you know installing the software in your system and all that here you can write and this automatically the code if you want to save it saves to your drive so this is how this is the particular line which you can code so for example if i want to print hello world so this is the particular line which i want to print in my display so here i am writing the code and it will be output will be displayed here you can click here also for the run cell that this particular cell has been executed this particular cell has to be executed or you can just press shift enter for executing so this particular code will execute and it will give you the display here that what it is going to print this is a single line of code you can write multiple line of codes also by just pressing enter like this here you can do that so here you can see that it has print hello world also. Now for multiple line of code, what we have to do, if you write here print hello. And next you can write other statements also print and similarly you can run this set of code also and see you can see here it is going to show you that hello and then how are you so it is much easier you have to not import any header file or any such thing it is just very simple writing a code in python now you can save this particular file here also for example if i want to save this particular file as first so this particular file can be saved to your desktop also if you want to save or you can fetch it from the drive also. So this is how this particular file can be saved of your code. So it is much easier to write Python code here. That's why we are using Google Colab for running all our Python programs. Next we come up to the comments that we know that there are comments which are there in Python. So comments are also very easy in Python. If you want to give a single line comment, then you have to use the hash sign for writing the single line comment. And if you want to line the multi line comment, which we say for that, either you have to use this double quotes, single quotes, triple time, or you can use the double quotes also. And similarly, it will end like that. It will begin with double quotes and it will end with single quotes three time. You can line the, write the multiple line comments also. Let's see how can you do that. For example, if uh, we are starting with Python, then if I write this particularly print, this is what I'm writing. And now I'm specifying a comment that what this particular line is going to do. Then for that, I'm going to write that this is a single line comment. 
So this is how you can write the comment also. So it will print you just the output that okay this is hello uh, everyone and this is a single line comment you can do that. Similarly you can do multiple line comment auto. It starts with triple double quotes and ends with the single quotes also. So this is how it begins or you can simply start with single uh, quotes three times and end that with simply single quote three times. This is also you can write the multiple line comments. Next we come to the variables in Python. Now variables we all know that what are variables variables are nothing but reserved memory location to store the values and this means when you create a variable you reserve some space in the memory. So for example if I am initializing the value of let's say a is equals to 20 and then here I am also initializing a particular value that b equals to let's say go edu hub. These are the two things which I am initialized as variables. Next, I want to print. So that is going to show me the re results or return me that what are the particular values which are initialized there. It's going to print. So for that, what I can write is very simple. Just write print a comma b. And as you execute this particular statement or this set of code here, you can see a comma b. So 20 and go edu hub is printed so this is how it is done so you have seen that how easy it is to initialize variable and print them in python next if we come to the keywords in python now there is a thing that a variable name cannot start with a number and it must start with underscore or any alphabet that is acceptable a variable name is case sensitive it should only contain alphabet digits and underscore now you cannot declare python keywords as a variable so you cannot declare the keywords as variable name or any identifiers name particularly now python has a set of 33 keywords and how can you see that those particular keywords for that firstly what you have to do is import keyword and next if you want to check that how many keywords are actually there and you are going to write that in print keyword dot kw list and as you execute this set of cell of code then here you can see it is printing you the several set which are keywords so you cannot def find these particular names as your variable for as which you have is a equals to 20 and b equals to go edu hub so you cannot use these particular that assert is equals to 20 it will show that no this is a keyword you cannot declare it as a variable so this is the very basic thing which we must know while importing any particular name or giving as keyword you cannot use false non true as so this is a set of 33 keyword and this is the particular set of code which you can see that how can you print all the keywords then you can print with the help of print keyword dot kw list in python next is the data types in python and we are going to study about the basics of data types and how it is classified in python so data types in python are of two types or majorly classified into two types that is immutable and mutable now immutable are those which are unable to change that means we cannot change or you can add or remove the particular value and mutable are those that means they are liable to change you can add or remove the values from mutable now in immutable there are numbers string and tuple and in mutable there is list dictionary and sets so we will discuss about them in detail in our upcoming videos about each data type but how can we right now check that if any particular value passed to a variable then what is the particular data type so for that we have a function in python and the name of that fu function is type so for example we have passed the value of a equals to 20 and now i want to know that what is the particular type of this data so how can I do that? I just have to write in the print statement that print type of A. Simple. And it will return me that this is the particular type or the data type of the particular variable A is this. It is integer or string or whatever it is going to print me. So now let us check that how can we find the type of a data type with the help of type function in Python. 
so let's say we have used a equals to 10 and b equals to I have initialized the string here and c equals to 10.25 and now I want to print the type to know that what data type it actually is so for that we have a type function so I have to write print type of a print type of b and similarly print type of c now as i execute this particular set here you can see it returns me that the class type a is int for cat it is string and for 10.25 it is a float this is how it is going to print so this shows me this particular type function i can exactly know that particular variable what type of value is passed with the help of type function to find out that what type of value passed in that particular variable or what is the data type so by the end of this video we have discussed about how can we print a particular statement or print several lines of statement in python comments how can we initialize variable and what are the several keywords which are there which we cannot take as a name of a variable or identifier and we have also seen the use of type function for more concepts and programs of python we will look into upcoming videos